Hey teachers, with instruction happening remotely, students are spending a lot of time staring at a screen. And it's really important for them to have opportunities to get up and move during the day. So in this video, I'm sharing 10 of my favorite virtual brain breaks. Whether teaching remotely or in a classroom, it's important for students to work on computers and use technology. But too much constant screen time can have negative effects such as vision problems and obesity. It's important that we give students opportunities to get up and move throughout the day so that we can not only reduce those negative effects, but it will also enable students to focus better throughout the day. So here are 10 of my favorite virtual brain breaks you can try when teaching remotely. So a lot of times I save the best for last, but in this case, I'm sharing my favorite with you first. Number one is have a virtual dance party. I don't know about your students, but any year that I've taught, no matter what grade level I teach, I find that kids love to get up and dance to fun music. So if you're teaching remotely, you can have a Spotify playlist or a Kids Bop album that you play and just let your students get up at their computer and dance and have fun for a few minutes. You can even turn this into a game. You can play freeze dance by just freezing the music periodically and watching the screen so that you can see each of your students in grid view. And if they don't freeze, when the song stops, they have to sit down and then you can see who is the last student standing. All right, number two is a classic and this one is always fun and that is Simon Says. Once again, you're gonna put your students in grid view so that you can see them all on your computer screen. And you're going to give out commands such as do jumping jacks, put your hand on your head, clap, um, all kinds of different things using Simon Says, and you will keep this going until there is only one student left standing. Number three is a basic one, but it's an important one, and that is allow your students to take bathroom breaks throughout the day. Just pause during your remote instruction and say, okay, we're gonna take 10 minutes, get up, go use the bathroom, move around, get a snack, do whatever you need to do. But you just have to be back here at the computer at a certain time. So just take breaks throughout the day to let your students get up and move in their environment. If you think about it, we do this at school all the time. I know there's times where I would take my whole class to the bathroom. So just think about it in that same way in your remote setting. All right, number four is a very popular movement activity and that is Go Noodle. If you're not familiar with Go Noodle, it is a free online platform that has a lot of movement activities and dance activities where students get up and move to fun songs and videos. So you can play a lot of these videos for your students remotely and have them get up and move next to their computer. Now, if you teach older kids, some of the favorites that I have found with older kids are Banana Banana Meatball and Boom Chicka Boom. You can search for these inside of Go Noodle, but those are great ones for older kids. All right, number five, we are halfway through the list. And maybe you have students that feel like they're a little too old or too cool for Go Noodle. Why not still have PE class with your students? You can do this by you yourself doing stretches in front of your computer and having your students follow along. You can also find a lot of great exercise videos on YouTube such as uh, Zumba and dance videos, yoga videos, um, all kinds of exercise videos. And you can even do this for 20, 30 minutes a day so that your students are still getting an actual PE class. Now, if you go to YouTube, some of the ones that I like to use are Yoga with Adrienne. She does really simple yoga moves that are easy to follow along with. Um, another one that I've been seeing a lot of teachers use lately, and, it, and it's a lot of fun, and that is PE with Joe. And Joe, from what I can tell, is a physical education teacher, and he's created videos during this time so that students can still be exercising and getting PE at home. All right, number six is a virtual scavenger hunt. And I have another video here on my channel 
where I list out more than 20 different virtual scavenger hunts that you can do. And some of those are stationary and some of those involve movement. But a really easy way to incorporate movement into a virtual scavenger hunt is tell your students to go and find something. And you can even connect this to things that you're teaching. So for example, go find something that is in the shape of a cylinder or go find some kind of money and students have to bring it back and describe what value the money they found has. So there's lots of ways that you can get students to go get things as part of a virtual scavenger hunt and then get them talking about academics as well. But make sure you check out that other video on my channel for tons and tons of ideas for how to do virtual scavenger hunts. All right, number seven is charades and you can either act things out or you can call on different students to act things out um, but basically you're just going to act things out and then have the other students try to guess what it is now a couple different uh, suggestions here you can have students call out their responses but if you have too many students and that's just getting too noisy a lot of times in the video conferencing tools that we use there's a chat feature so students can also type what they think the person is acting out in the chat. But this is another thing that you can also make educational. Um, you could tell students they have to act out something related to Virginia studies or science or a book that you're reading. And you can tie your charades game in to what you're teaching. Number eight is dice and card games. So what you can do for this is you can either have a die or you can have a deck of cards and you're gonna keep whichever one of those you use um, with you. And then you're also going to write down different types of exercises. So jumping jacks, squats, running in place, um, sit-ups, uh, whatever you can think of, you're gonna put those on pieces of paper and put them in a bucket. And then what you're gonna do is you're either gonna roll the dice or flip the card over and whatever number appears tells how many that the students are going to do and then you'll select an exercise from the bucket. So let's say you roll a six and then you pick jumping jacks from the bucket. Students would do six jumping jacks and then you roll a three and pick squats from the bucket. Students will do three squats and you can keep this going for as long as you want. All right, number nine is a silly one and this is the alphabet game. Now this is really simple. To do this, you're gonna have all of the students stand up next to the computer and you're going to have your computer screen back to grid view so that you can see all of them and you are going to call out letters. It can be any random letter from the alphabet and students are going to attempt to make that letter with their body in some way. So it can be really silly seeing what um, the different what different students come up with and how they move and manipulate their bodies to create different shapes. All right, we've made it all the way to number 10 on our list and this one ties into math and you can either do skip count jumping or multiple jumping. And what I mean by that is you can either have students jump up and down or you can have them jump doing jumping jacks, but whatever way you have them jump, they have to either skip count or count by multiples. So they could count by twos, by fives, by tens. If you're doing multiplication tables, you can have them doing threes and fours and some of the multiples that may be hard for them, but this is a fun way to get them up and moving and reviewing important math skills at the same time. All right, there you have it. There are 10 virtual brain breaks that you can use if you are teaching remotely. And I would love to hear from you. Are you doing some kind of virtual brain break to get students up and moving that I didn't mention in this video? Make sure you leave a comment below and let me know what you're doing. Share your ideas with everybody else who's watching. And then make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel because I upload new videos every single week with all kinds of tips and information and resources to help teachers. And I don't want you to miss out on any of those. So until next time, happy teaching.